my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18. And this is episode 13. And this is called You Are Cordially Not Invited. And this was a pretty decent episode, this episode. Um, I liked it because Alexis was in it, but barely. And Jen. Jen and Shannon, they're carrying the show. That's that's it, that's all. Just in case y'all didn't know that, they are carrying the show, and I love it. And both of them are just giving main character energy, and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So we're, we're going to pick up where we left off, because if you remember last week, it actually ended as a to-be-continued. So we are still at Katie's house, and this is where Tamara storms off, she falls, and then she's like at the car waiting for someone to come after her or whatever. I don't know. Don't care. Um, but Katie does follow her because hello is her event and she's hosting. And Matt mentions and shares with the rest of the group. Because the rest of the group's just kind of still sitting there like, uh, what the heck? Um, like, including Tamara's husband, Eddie. Um, yeah. So, um... But everyone else is kind of bewildered and just still like at the table. And Katie's like, you know, trying to console her. And the whole entire time, Tamara is just spiraling, literally, and running her mouth about the FBI and that Jen knows about it and isn't saying anything and Ryan's no good, da 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 da, blah 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 blah. Continuing where she left off last season, bringing your friend. You called her your friend on the show just to slander and defame her, her family, and her character. Yeah, classic Tamara. Um, and then, um, but at, there is some, a little bit of validity what she's talking about. So for those who don't know, um, Ryan's friend, and I think also alleged business partner, is the one who is being implicated in like a gambling scheme um, through one of the base, one of the greatest baseball players currently that's playing Hideo Tommy, I think his name is. Um, I don't, I don't follow other, I don't follow any other baseball players or baseball people outside the Cubs and the Sox. So sorry if you are, if you're not on either of those teams, I don't know who you are, or if you're not um, McCutcheon. From the Pirates. <laughs> but that's because I lust over McCutcheon. That's different. That's not the same thing. Anyway, <laughs> I he's a great baseball player and pretty much a Pirates lifer. I shouldn't even like him like that. But, yeah. <laughs> I was literally just talking to my friends about that last week. But anyway, off the subject... But there was like a gambling scheme that occurred through um, Hideo Tommy's um, interpreter um, and it was illegal gambling. So that's why the FBI is involved and allegedly um, the account that is being implicated is a joint account that also has Ryan's name on it. But there's no proof or anything of Ryan's actual involvement. Um, just, again, I, I think we mentioned in previous episodes, and they were alluding to it, that Ryan's money might be a little funny. That's what they're talking about, is this kind of money might be funny. But, um, anyway. So, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. Um, so, just in case y'all, let me, let me, let me show you what's going on here. Wait, can I show you? I'm trying to show you a little bit more. Hold on. <laughs> That's why I was distracted. Um, yeah, I gotta adjust my camera real quick. Okay. All right, there we go. We back. I don't have much time, so I actually gotta get going on this. So anyway. Um that's where there's some might be some validity to it, but we don't know. It's all alleged. Child, the, this lifetime's alleged. Um, <laughs> the world is alleged. We don't know. We don't know. We don't we know. Um, but um, one thing that the producers do put into this is um, a TikTok um, person named 
Giorgio says. And Giorgio says, I think, has um, broke some news from Bravo people before. And so he actually shares more details of what's being alleged um, if you want to check out the episode. But that was kind of a cliff note version of what he said. So, because, um, again, we need to cite the sources here. But um, anyway... After Tamara does her ranting and raving that she does, Katie comes back to the table and states to Eddie that she is ready to go. And so this is where I really looked at things. I'm like, so Eddie leaves. He says bye to everyone. And I mean, bye bye to everyone. He even gives Ryan a hug. And then he really kind of talks things out with, um, Jen, he even apologizes to them both for Tamara's actions. So it makes me think what Ryan said in the confessional towards the end of last episode. There's some truth to that. I that you know Eddie and Tamara's relationship is a sham. Eddie's miserable with Tamara. It it really does kind of look like that's what it is, and. His soul, he's just kind of soulless, just kind of hanging out. And also, too, one thing that I'm starting to pick up, and this, this is all alleged, by the way. My theory is, I think Tamara is completely jealous of Jen. I mean, if we didn't know that already, this would tell you that she's completely jealous. I don't think she's necessarily jealous of Ryan and Jen's relationship. I think she's jealous of Jen completely. She knows it will make her look back to go after Jen directly. So she uses Ryan to go after Jen. So because she'll get eaten alive if she just tries to go after Jen by herself. Because the other thing that I think I that I think she's jealous of is Jen and Eddie's relationship. Because one thing that was very revealing, both this last episode and this episode, the beginning of this episode, is that Jen's relationship with Eddie is stronger than it is with Tamara. There's a closeness there that was not mentioned before last season, but that's what it is. I think really Jen was just being respectful and trying to give her Tamara a chance, give Tamara chances, but I don't think she really knew Tamara like that. I think she was closer to Eddie, if anyone, because they have similar, they, they do have a lot in common when it comes to trying to own, trying to be a business owner, and going through the world of fitness. I see there's a lot in common there. And I notice whenever Eddie does talk about Jen, he does light up a little bit. And I don't, I'm not saying that Eddie would cheat on Tamara. I don't know if that's his, I don't, I don't know him. We don't know this guy. But if I see it, imagine how Tamara feels about it. So I think that might be the other underlying thing that is going on that I don't think anyone has talked about or seen, but that's what I'm seeing. I'm like, yeah, there's some jealousy there. And I don't think it has anything to do with necessarily Ryan and Jen's relationship. I think it's Jen just in general. But anyway. So then from there, after Eddie leaves, um, Jen states you know, she's not blind. You know, they're all apologizing to Jen about what happened. And Jen's like, I'm not blindsided by Tamara at all. When I saw how low she would go, and I think after what happened last season, I think Jen did her homework and started watching previous seasons of Real Housewives. Also, I think she reached out to former housewives. And one housewife that I know, former housewife that she is close to, that I know she's close to, who I would love to see back on the show, Bravo, is Gretchen. And y'all know Gretchen and Tamara did get knocking along because that was one woman that Tamara was ridiculously jealous of. And to me, this is just giving Gretchen 2.0, but Tamara learned from her mistakes from Gretchen to not go after Gretchen directly, a.k.a. Jen directly, if you get what I'm putting down. Um, I feel like if you haven't been watching the show before, you wouldn't know. But if you go back, you're like, oh, because with Tamara, it's a rinse and repeat when it comes to her behavior. And anyway, so then after Jen states, like, I'm not really 
surprised at all. I ain't gonna hold you when Jen gave that look. I was like, oh, we're gonna see a different Jen now. Jen ain't playing with her. <laughs> Jen was trying to keep it cute and now she ain't playing. And even towards the end of this episode, she wasn't playing with her. She's like, I'm not gonna play your games anymore. Um, because people like Tamara, aka bullies, they mistake a lot of people who are kind like Jen for weakness. And I don't think I don't think that's I don't think that's that. <laughs> I don't think that's that at all. But anyway, so then from there, um, Jen asked like Katie, what did Tamara say? And then you know that she mentioned the FBI thing. And then that's when M asked more questions to Ryan about it. And Ryan did try his best to answer, but his answers didn't make sense all the way because, you know, for one, I think he knows more than what he's saying. So he's not going to incriminate himself on national TV. And for two, it's an ongoing case. And even if it wasn't him directly, his friend who he sees regularly because he calls this guy his friend, he's not going to implicate him on national TV either. So he's really watching what he says, but he basically says that he's not directly involved in it. Um, he, he basically proclaims his innocence like, look, I didn't know anything about it like that. And whether you believe him or not, who knows? That's not our job to figure it out. And, Kate, and um, Emily mentions that she was aware of it and um, basically, also the illegal gambling gambling thing, it's illegal in California. I'm not sure if it's illegal in Nevada. So I think it really depends, because gambling rules are different from state to state if you're someone's really into like gambling. I'm not, so I don't know all that, which is why I'm trying to just like allege, everything's alleged. But anyway, the scene ends where Katie apologizes because it's her house and it just kind of didn't go the way she thought it was going to go. And that's where the scene ends. Okay. And then next we have, um, and I'm going to apologize real quick. Y'all already know allergies. But um, we have um, Katie, Shannon, and Heather. They meet up to go patio furniture shopping with Shannon and we find out that Shannon's going to be celebrating her 60th birthday soon and Shannon's a fellow Aries so hey sis um <laughs> so that's what's happening there and um Katie I believe Katie's the one who asked her about how did her shows go with Vicky and she you know states how well it went they were sold out and things are going well with that which is good to hear and then they recapped with her what happened at Jen's party and everything with Alexis. And then that's when Shannon kind of mentions like, oh, so you mean um, Alexis and her PR stunt that she did just did? Because she is blaming Shannon. And if you didn't know the last episode, Shannon made it very clear this episode. She is putting all the blame. She's putting a lot of the blame on the PR stunt. The PR piece of it was Alexis. And then the lawsuit itself is John. Which, honestly, if y'all saw review last week, I'll just say it again, I believe it. I believe what Shan says. Um, but anyway, then from there, Katie recaps how her get together went. And um, so then in a dual scene while this is happening, then we see that Emily goes to meet Gina at her place. And Gina's place is coming along nicely because as we know, once she kicked out Travis um, and her, and she she remodeled the place. So things are coming together. I think it actually might be completely done. Not quite sure, but it does look nice. And um, so Gina and Emily are also recapping what happened at Katie's house. And Gina does share that Tamara actually, she actually talked to Tamara about it and Tamara you know, Tamara and put place the blame on everyone else but her, of course. Um, not the way she talks or anything. <laughs> and interestingly enough, both 
Gina and Emily are on the right side of history this time. And they are like, I don't know why Tamara thinks she can just keep doing what she does. It's not okay. And I was shocked to hear that. I'm like, wow, which I love it because that means that's good. That's good. Cut the toxic out of there because I think even they see that Tamara is doing too much. And you kind of already knew Gina was going to lean that way because Gina's kind of alluded to all season that she doesn't like how Tamara has been moving. And she's been calling Tamara out all season when it comes to how she's been treating the Shannon thing, which is why Tamara's let go of the Shannon thing because she was going to try to basically put all her vitriol with Shannon. But when Tamara saw that that wasn't working, now she's doing, she's going back to the rinse and repeat from last season because Tamara doesn't want to share her real life. <laughs> anyway, so then um, Shannon, back, at Shan back with Shannon, Shannon mentions that Tamara stated that she didn't want to go to Shannon's tea party because Shannon's going to be having a birthday tea party. And side note, Great minds think, I'm like, I still want to have a tea party. I did not do that this year. I was thinking about doing it for my milestone birthday this year. But I think I still might do it before the end of the year. Because if y'all didn't realize this, I've been celebrating my birthday this whole entire year. I've been treating it like as soon as I, as soon as the month of April started, it's been my birthday year. So it's going to keep going until like the end of March next year. Yeah. And then I'm going to have a birthday month for 41. And then that's it. <laughs> Girl math. Um, <laughs> so anyway. Um, but yeah. there Honestly, there's been two things on the show so far that I've been thinking about doing. I just haven't done yet. But we're going to pull the trigger at some point and do it. The tea party. And then earlier this season, the burlesque shoot. Um, I've actually gotten a consultation to do that. I want my body to get a little bit more before I do that. So once that happens, oh yeah, your girl's gonna do that soon. Sooner rather than later. But anyway, <laughs> um, maybe for my 45th. Anyway, so um, Katie states that, um, so after Shannon shared the news that Tamara says she didn't wanna go to the tea party, Katie mentions to her like, well, that was right after that argument just popped off. Cause the they were like, apparently Tamara and Shannon were texting at while they were at Katie's house, so that's when that happened. And um, Shannon's like, "Oh, okay." And then from there, then we see Gina and um, Emily. They're talking about. There's still that underlying issue that's going on between Heather and Gina. Things are still not resolved. And apparently after Gina left with he um, Emily at Jen's house, Heather felt a way about that as well. Because we know that Heather's reevaluating everything that Gina's doing. It's not just that. But Gina is like thinking it was just that, but it's everything. I think... You know, really, if you really look at it from like a subjective standpoint, Heather's been side eyeing Gina for some time now. And honestly, even before Katie became a thing, it started last season. And so she's been just taking inventory as things happen, um, which is why they're kind of in this weird Cold War ish type of energy. Um, they're not really good. They're not really bad. It's very passive aggressive um, because neither of them will actually touch it right away or haven't touched it. Um, and then Heather, and then from there, um, they start talking about Heather and like Emily and what's going on with that situation because, um, and... Emily still is like, you, you know, standing on business. And she's like, I did not feel heard. And that's all it was about. It had nothing to do with me thinking she had like horrible intent or anything like that. I don't think it was that. I just didn't feel heard. And yes, everything else of how I felt wasn't me thing. I will acknowledge that. But I just wish I would have felt heard at that moment while I was consoling her about it. And um, back over at the um, furniture shop, 
Heather straight up asked Katie, what side are you on on that? And I found that as a weird choice of words, Heather. Um, I know hold you ever since the hot mic moment, I am looking at Heather differently. I am starting to see what maybe I'm starting to see what Emily's been saying. You know, about how you come off kind of fake. Because the hot mic moment was giving you our fake. And then even you saying picking a side, it wasn't that deep where a side needed to be picked. And Katie was just like kind of being, Katie did not take the bait and start anything. She was just actually reasonable. She was like, you know, I just really think that Emily just wanted to feel heard. And then, and then of course, Heather was offended by the fact that Kate, that Emily has talked to everyone else about it, but her, but it's like, you haven't given her, based off of your reaction, you did not give a safe space for her to talk to you about it. So guess what? She's going to talk to her other friends who actually been, who have been receiving it. That's how that works. So anyway, that's how that ends. This next scene is a short scene with Emily and she's meeting up with Anthony, who is part of the um, Citizen Center, like a client for that. Um, and she's at a tailor shop um, getting him some, you know, nice clothes for him to wear because he's trying. Um, basically, for those who did not watch last season, this was introduced to us last season where because although Emily's no longer um, a practicing attorney, she still does this thing through Citizen Center. And what Citizen Center is about um, is people who've been wrongfully convicted, who stayed in the system, who've been in the system, who actually had to serve time um, and unfairly um, at that. Um, she, that center helps get them out of the situation and not only get them out of the situation, help them reacclimate to the outside world. And that includes getting them something nice to wear because hello, you know, you can't, you know, you need to have nice things to wear to, you know, try to get, you know, a nice job and things of that nature. So it's one of those centers that helps, you know, get you together. And, um, Last season, I loved this. And I'll be honest, prior to last season, I didn't, I could take or leave Emily. But after last season, when she shared this, is when my opinion of Emily actually changed. And I was, you know, starting to like Emily, although I could not stand how she acted at their reunion. But it did change my opinion for the better. And um, I will say this directly I do want Emily to stay on this show. Gina can, I could take or leave her, but I want her, not only do I want her to stay on the show, I want to see more of this because last season she had a different person. We heard their story. And then this episode we did hear Anthony's story and it was really messed up. Um, basically he got for, um, convicted of a murder he did not commit and he was only 15 years old and he had to stay there until he was like 18. Um, and he thought he was going to get out of it because he had no previous arrest record or anything. He had a very clean record and turned out it was his step, it was his stepbrother who did it. But his stepbrother was in court at the same time for something unrelated to that. And his brother, stepbrother never said anything about it, thinking he was going to get acquitted. And he ended up serving the whole entire time, even though he shouldn't have had to serve it. Yeah. Um... But in last season, we heard a similar story of another person, too. So, if anything, I... Because there isn't... I would say besides Heather and Emily, I don't remember if there's any other people on the show currently that do these type of things where they, you know... You know, shed light on situations like this. So, this was a really nice thing and very educational. Um... Anyway, from there, the next scene was another short scene where we have Katie and her family. They're at a Korean barbecue. And we, I think it was previously somewhat established, but it's very known that Kylie actually speaks Korean, um, which is her daughter. But Katie does not know Korean at all. And even when she says something professional that she thought she knew, 
that was Korean. It was Mandarin. It was not Korean. And the shady producer said Mandarin, not Korean. Um, and it sounded Mandarin. I ain't gonna hold you. I don't know how I knew that, but I was like, that kind of sounds Mandarin. Um, the reason why I don't know how I know that, because I don't have any friends or didn't have any friends who speak Mandarin. I had a friend that speak Cantonese, and that's not the same. <laughs> I think they're similar, but they're not quite the same. Um, anyway. <clears throat> so then from there, um, we also find out at, on this, in this short scene with the family um, that for her 40th, 40th birthday, she's actually going to take, um, the family's going to go back to Korea um, because she was born in Korea, even though she was adopted, Katie was adopted. Um, and she did, she was able to locate her birth mom and her birth mom, I guess, is um, still lives in the same village just right outside of Seoul. Um, South Korea and so they're gonna go there um, and um, yeah and then we also found out that her um, birth name is um, Suwon yeah Su Suwon I think it's her name like no Young, Young Wong Young Wong it's Young Wong yeah that is her birth name um, so and that's very common uh, whenever someone gets Americanized they get an American name um, I actually do have a friend who is Korean, who's, who's Korean, who has an American name. I don't, I never did ask what her actual real name is, though. Um, well, not real name, because both of them are her name. But you know what I mean, the birth name, the name that she was given at birth before um, things got changed through adoption. But anyway, both of these things are very nice. Um, and then from there, we're going to get into the main event. Okay, so then we have our typical Housewives montage where we see Emily's getting ready and then we see that she is going to surprise Shannon because um, this is the day of Shannon's um, tea party. She's going to surprise Shannon with the picture that Shannon took at the burlesque photo shoot. Um, Emily shared that she was very appreciative that she was there at the photo shoot. She made, helped make it light and fun and... Um, also that Shana's been having such a crazy year that she hopes that this picture will cheer her up. Um, so I guess unbeknownst to Shannon, she actually did get that picture um, developed and everything and it got it in a nice frame. And Shannon looks good in this picture, by the way. She looks good. Um, does not look 60. Um, <laughs> and then um, from there we see Katie FaceTiming Jen. And Jen's having like a wardrobe fiasco because her, um, what she was going to wear did not come in on time. So now she's going to the mall to get something super quickly. And then um, Katie asks, how does she feel about seeing Tamara there? And Katie's like, I give two ish about seeing her. And she, she said it. And she's like, I don't want nothing to do with her. I'm just going to pay her dust. I was like, all right. Um, the hint of the, the change, that change attitude. I love it. Side note, I just love when you see a housewife, especially a housewife that seems like a good person, when they start off kind of, you know, meek-ish and very um, kind of naive, and then you see their glow up the following season. And I hope this continues with, um, with Jen. Because, I mean, Jen is still giving when these be gay. We, like, we loved her when we met her last season, and she's continuing where she left off. I hope she does not ever disappoint us. Um, <laughs> her partner might, but I don't want her to. <laughs> anyway. So then, um, Shannon is at the tea party. Um, she's not actually there there, but she's kind of getting things set up. And so... While she's getting things set up, um, and we're, we're kind of just seeing where it's at. And then from there, then the first to arrive are Gina and Emily. And then Jen arrives next. And then Heather arrives next. And then this is awkward immediately. Because, yeah, Heather doesn't really have a close relationship with Jen. And then the other two people she literally is not okay with right now at the moment either. 
And so Heather wants to talk to Emily. She asks Emily, can I talk to you? And then Emily's like, this is about Shan's birthday. I don't want to talk to you right now. Um, which I thought that was going to be it. No, it wasn't that. But then, and honestly, if, if, sh I think honestly, if Emily would have just said that, left it at that, I think that's how that would have ended. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> we, you already know what's going on. Um, but because she elaborated on how she felt, you could tell Emily wanted to talk about it, but like she just was a little weary of it because of they do want she you know Emily's making it clear I do want to make sure that this stays about Shannon. I do not want to make this about us. And so received. Um <clears throat> and then and then as this is happening though, um Gina shares her feedback about the situation and states like, you know, the fact that she wants to talk to her now, um, it just doesn't come off genuine because she never wants to do the talk at the moment. She needs to leave, come back, reset, get the right words and come back and talk. And I will say two things can be true because I kind of at first when I saw this initially, I did take Gina's side on it. Just because of that hot mic moment, it, it really has changed my opinion on, on Heather, like, a lot. Um, but after I kind of, like, am t trying to, like, forget that that happened, I can see both sides here. So one side, I can see Gina's correct. It does come off disingenuous when every single time there's a conflict, you have to come back and get the right words and come back. I even struggled with, I had a situation, like, so my ex-boyfriend my last relationship, that was always how conflict was handled on his side and it drove me nuts. Um, but some people are just naturally like that. And that's where I'm at with it. Through couples counseling, I figured that part out. But there are some conflicts that should really be resolved at that moment. And if you can't, I feel like that is a you problem who needs to learn how to manage your emotions better and more properly. That's my opinion. So also, <laughs> I guess I can see both, like, again, I can see both sides. Like it does come off, especially if you're a person who is not into waiting to handle a conflict, especially something that could be dead right away. It comes off disingenuous and every single time you have to make sure you have the right words and it's perfect. And it's in a bow. And um, yeah, you see why with the hot mic moment, I had a tough time um, looking at that. Oh, by the way, I don't think I even share what the hot mic moment was about. So last episode, um, when Terry and Heather were talking about the girls, Terry was honest with Heather about how she handles conflict and Heather did not like it because it was less than perfect. And then Heather on a hot mic moment, she's like, don't you ridicule kill me in front of the camera. I did not like that. Yep. So there's that. Anyway, so I'm not sure how much time passed after that, but then Katie arrives next because, you know, producing and all that because... The reason why I say that is because uh, right after Katie arrives, Heather asks Emily again, can they talk? And then Emily does agree. And I'm questioning it because it, it literally was based off of what we saw. I'm Emily, why did you stand on business? But if it was maybe a half an hour, an hour later, okay, I get it. Timing and timing is context when it comes to like how long was there a wait in between before um, Heather asked again. But anyway, or were they nudged by producers like resolve it? Because <laughs> maybe they were. Um, and so they go off to they go off on the side to talk. And initially, it doesn't come off. And honestly, this is my honest opinion about the whole thing. And maybe Heather was listening, but when she is listening, it doesn't come off like she's listening. Um, I, I 
can't unsee the hot mic moment or unhear the hot mic moment. So it, the way things went, even though on paper they resolved it, because they resolved it, by the way. Um, and I mean, this, and also what was going on with Emily and Heather were two episodes too long. It should have been done at that day in that moment, but I don't know. Um, it didn't come off genuine. It doesn't come off genuine. It just doesn't. Um, so, basically, Tamara arrives next. And, again, they do go back to Heather and Emily's conversation. They do talk it out. They see both sides. And Emily does state, all I wanted from you was for you to hear me and to feel heard from you. That was it. It was not about all this other stuff. That was it. And when I felt like you dismissed me, that's where everything went to hell. It had nothing to do with the other things. And um, also, to this episode, because I have seen some other people reviewing the show. Um, and no offense, I can kind of tell some of these other people who are reviewing the show Maybe they've never had body image issues ever, or if they have, I, I don't think the people who are, so I've just noticed there's a trend. The people that have had body issue, issues that are reviewing the show kind of understand where Emily's coming from and don't think it's a storyline, don't think she's reaching. But those who have never had a body issue image or have a preconceived notion of Emily, they can't see it all the way. Um... And they're a little harsh, in my opinion, on how they um, go about things with her. Um, and I can see both sides of it. I get it. You know, it's never been your truth. It's going to be hard to see it. But that's kind of, to a certain degree, Emily's point. <laughs> because Heather, on paper, seems like she might be someone who's never received that or understood that. But Heather does share her confessional. She also suffers from body image issues too because she's a woman. And I'm like, I get you're a woman, but that's not always, it's not the same. You know what I mean? I feel like if you are a woman, that's one step because of patriarchy and everything else. But then the other step is if you're, if you have issues with weight management, that's a whole, that's a mess within the mess. Or if you're just someone who has body dysmorphia, which is also a form of that, you know, it's a mess within the mess. It could be tough. And then also add all that and then be on national TV. I don't know if I have thick enough skin to be able to handle that personally. I mean, I do YouTube, but it's YouTube. I don't care. <laughs> you know, and think about the time that I finally started, decided to do YouTube. I probably, I could have done this YouTube 10, 15 years ago. I could have been face, you know, all face and all that 15 years ago. But let me be truthful with you. I was not confident enough to do that. I'm confident now. I know who I am now. I'm comfortable with my own skin now. I am okay with when I'm bigger, which I kind of am right now, and when I'm smaller now. Younger me would not be able to do this and be okay. So I guess I really just want people <laughs> to take it easy on Emily um, when it comes to the body issue, issue, image things, because as someone who also has suffered from it, and I also do see go therapy and whatnot, so let's not get that twisted. I do get triggered by other people being so hard on her. I wouldn't give a fuck what you say about me, but <laughs> I do get triggered when like other people are judging other people's situations or just kind of like, what the, you know, especially when it comes to that, um, just because it, it is close to home for me a little bit too, so. Um, sorry, I went on a soapbox there, but moving on. They resolve things. I probably should have left it there. Yeah. So then, back at the table, though, Tamara tries to apologize to, um, Jen. And Jen... <laughs> I love Jen. Jen just had this look on her face like, is this bitch good? She had this look like... This was her look the whole entire time. She's like, I was like, <laughs> Jen, fix your face. Fix your face. <laughs> it was so clear.
clear as day that Jim was not accepting that apology. She's like, I ain't accepting that lame ass apology. <laughs> like, and that look on that on her face was so priceless. That is the thumbnail of this video. I hope you realize that. Jen, Jen you did that. Um, <laughs> and then after that, then, um, oh, by the way, Emily and, um, and Heather, they do come back to the table. I don't know why I couldn't figure out words. Just in time for Shannon to arrive, the guest of honor. Shannon, um, right away, she provides all the ladies with a gift. And um, in a nice kind of gold gift bag. And then Emily provides her gift to Shannon and presents it to the group, presents it so the group sees it for the first time. And then Shannon makes this cute comment. She's like, oh my gosh, I look like I'm the leader of a brothel. Uh, <laughs> and and um, yeah, Gina didn't know what that was. I was like, girl, what? I, I ain't gonna hold you. Um, Gina is a very confusing New York for me. Are you sure you're from New York, New York? Are you, are, or are you from like upstate New York? Because... Some of Gina's comments and her confessionals, it's giving shelter. It's not, it doesn't come off as she's like from like New York City. And even if she, I, it's confusing. So it was weird that she didn't understand, didn't know what a brothel was. But anyway, um, so that was cute. And then it kind of timing wise, it worked out because, so Shannon had like her peacoat looking like dress that she wears a lot. And then she did like this and stripped. But she, underneath that was um, the union flag. She was wearing a union flag dress. And so that was the announcement to the cast trip that they're going to London. And so everyone has her comments about London. And some and Jen, I love Jen. Jen's re reaction was so genuine. She's like, I've never been to London. We're going to London. And that's how it would be because I've never been to London either. Um, and then... Um, Heather was very Heather because she's like, I've been to London multiple times, so I'm excited to go again. And then, um, Tamara mentioned she's only kind of been to London, like as a layover type situation. So like, you know, that whole thing. And then, um, and then Gina mentioned about, the, she was talking about things that she likes or London, but they're all stereotypical TV stuff. And then she mentioned like, Princess Kate, and I was like, oh, this explains a lot. You really are sheltered. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, and then from there, then um, Heather gives her um, Hermes sandals, and then um, Emily jokes that she likes um, uh, Ferragato um, shoes as well, and then that's when Shannon takes up on herself. She's like, yes. Yes, and I have the receipts to prove it, all the receipts. And so all the ladies are like, oh my gosh. And then um, they, the producers show us a shortcut scene of Shannon showing Gina all the receipts that she kept of everything she purchased for John. And we thought we were going to be out of that situation when it comes to that. No, of course not. Because thirsty ass Alexis had to make herself known in this episode one way or the other. Because she knows she was not going to be invited to Shannon's birthday party. So she instead essentially crashes her party um, by sending a gift of flowers to her. It was a giant gift of flowers. And so at first, Shannon's very, she's genuinely confused. At first, based off the preview, I thought, I thought it was a clever way of John serving her. But, I, but now I had to remember, oh, oh yeah, she already did. She already did get served a lawsuit. So that doesn't make sense. But I was like, man, that's a swaggy way of serving someone a lawsuit. <laughs> but instead, no. It was, it was Alexis. Alexis sent this gift. It literally had an olive branch in it. And then it was a, a no apologize, not really apologizing, but just wanting to do an olive branch situation. And... Everyone's asking, so what do you think about this? And Shannon's like, it is like nine weeks too late. And like, you're literally involved in a lawsuit. 
with me. I'm not, no. <laughs> no. There's no olive branch. No. And and I'm like, and you're listening to you're listening to your coach when it comes to all this stuff. And so as she's kind of ranting and raving about it, everyone else is listening, but then Tamara is still taking the side of Alexis when it comes to all this. And you know what? Sean. I feel like part of this was Tamara's idea. Allegedly. Because the stance that Tamara has on all this, I've been paying attention the whole entire time. And I feel like Tamara's part of this. I think Tamara has been plotting more behind Shannon's back than even Shannon knows. And because Tamara's made it very known from the beginning there's no such thing as a low for her. Like she's willing to not have a relationship with like her daughter based off of how she is on this show. You can't see where the ceiling is for low if that's not even the ceiling for you, um, allegedly. So I just feel like, I feel like she's on, she's staying on like um, Alexa's side because I think she does want Shannon off this show or at least wants to make Shannon's, you know, life a living hell. Um, just because, you know, anyway, so Shannon, so basically Shannon talks more about the lawsuit and then she talks more about like the people magazine thing and Alexis and how we're not, and it does come up about like, so what about the trip? She's like, oh yeah, no, I actually have, um, so she, cause, oh no, they ask like, so are you going to like, you know, say something to, about the, about the flowers? And Shannon's like, oh no, I have an already pre-written text to her. And they're like, wait, what? Did you know you're getting a flower? No, 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 it's about the trip. And so she wrote, she read the text and she's like, yeah, so I'm going to be inviting the girls to Europe, and I just want to let you know that you are not invited. <laughs> and there is more to it than what she said after that, but that's where the you're cordially not invited came from, by the way, who comes this episode. And both Heather and like Katie and then even Jen are just like, ooh, that's a little harsh. Can you tone down the delivery of how you say that? And Emily's like, no, no, it's not. Send it the way you got it. And I agree with Emily. How dare you be involved in a lawsuit not once, but twice against me and make my life a living hell on this show. Try to mess up my sobriety even further or my even attempt at being sober and trying to do better by being on this show and just sabotaging me. How dare you? How dare you? And then try to smile on my face and apologize after you do all that stuff. No. So, I mean, the delivery was nice enough for me. I would put, my delivery would have been much worse. <laughs> Cause for me, once I'm done, I'm done and I don't care. Um, but, you know, anyway. So from there, the final scene, which of course was cringy, was someone had to give Alexis the news. So the reason why I'm saying someone had to give Alexis the news, instead of just Shanna sending that directly at that moment, um, they did all agree that Maybe we should talk to her first before you do that. And <laughs> the two newbies were the ones who were doing it. So you had um, Jen and Katie. They show up at her place and they're having wine and they're having drinks. And you could tell, side note, you could tell in this final scene that everything Alexis has been doing when it comes to the olive branch and really trying to get to know these girls Neither of them are genuine. She showed her whole entire ass in this final scene. 
Um, we know we're going to see more of her, unfortunately. Um, cause I, the previews shows that I think she does crash this part, this Europe trip. Um, because the audacity she has. Um, so Alexis, after they get settled in, they're having food, like a charcuterie board and some drinks. She asks like, so did the olive branch work? And they're like, no. <laughs> also, side note, um, Emily's commentary when it comes to everything related to um, Alexis Bellino, I love it. I, You know what? In a messed up way, I think that's partially why I like Emily this season. Somehow, this lady, Alexis Bellino, has made me love Emily. So maybe keep her on the show for that, but no. No, please don't. I, I'm kidding. Do not keep her on the show. But um, I don't think, you know, based off what I said last week, that's not going to happen. But anyway, so Alexis and her delusional mind really thought that the Elf Branch was going to work. Um, <laughs> and then the ladies, you know, not only say it didn't work, but like, yeah, Shannon might be sending you a text soon. So check your phone. And then as she does, so she goes upstairs and she's like, John, get my phone. And, she, and then they're like, wait, John's here? And they're like, yeah, of course he's here. <laughs> and so they go up, they go back downstairs. I mean, she goes, comes back downstairs and she reads the message. And like, can you read out loud? Shannon did not change a thing in that text. <laughs> And they're like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, we thought she should soften the blow. You know, it's, it's Shannon's trip. So like, uh, we can't, you know, it's her trip. It's her 60th birthday trip. So there's that. And, and then from there, I'm sorry, I kind of checked out a little bit here. And the reason why I checked out a little bit here. Because somehow, some way, these people, and by these people, I mean the producers, gave Alexis and John a fucking confessional. And I, all I heard from him was womp womp. I was not, I did not care what he had to say. I, I ain't going to hold you. He's basically saying the reason why he's suing like Shannon or wherever the hell, and I don't care. I don't care. You're not a housewife. But you at least finally got what you wanted. You got a confessional. Do you want to be able to like have an orange now? Because I feel like that's what you want. Anyway, so then they're trying to, Katie and Jen are trying to console her. But before, um, so as they're trying to console her, the producers in both their confessionals do ask her, ask them the question about do they think that um, Alexis leaked the story to people? The lawsuit to people. And Jen was lying. Because <laughs> Jen don't know how. Jen, okay, so Jen, you could tell what Jen was doing was she really was trying not to be in it. So instead she kind of lied. But it was so blatant that she was lying. That I feel like she wanted y'all to know that she's lying. Because a lot of was lying. It was, it, was so, it was such an obvious lie that you knew she was lying. But it was, you could tell, it was, it was kind of cute because you could tell she was just trying not to be in it. And then Katie, in her version of it was, she was like, well, I mean, Alexis do know the resources from People Magazine. I hate that I even say that. I just really want to be Switzerland in this. Um, <laughs> that's what she literally said. And then, literally, Alexis spirals and then she's like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And then she opens the door and kicks them both out. As if they're the ones who did all this. After she kind of spiraled in front of them. And both, like, Katie and, like, Jen are like, wait, we're getting kicked out? Are you serious? They were shocked and shook it. 
And they're like, we we're, we're here to console her. We're trying to do the right thing. Neither of us wanted to provide the news. Someone had to, though. You know, they're both like outside because they're outside now talking about this. And then um, Jen was like, I've never been, wait a minute, I have been kicked out of a place. I've been the victim before. <laughs> but never had someone's house like this. <laughs> I was like, Jen, I love you. But anyway, they both love Confused, and that's where the episode ended. That was the that was the show. Anyway, it was a great episode again. Um, if I was to rate between the three franchises who did the best this this episode this um week, I would say Salt Lake City, Orange County's close behind, and then Roni, y'all got some work to do. Anyway, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. Um, so next week is going to be four because Potomac comes back next week too. So you're going to be seeing this face a lot. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. This girl Sharon, a.k.a. the Melanin Celtic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.